I'm Lori Hybe, CEO and founder of Keystone Click. We are a strategic digital marketing agency. We focus on um, conducting research and collecting insights on behalf of our clients to ultimately build a marketing plan that is focused on the goals of our clients. I've got 20 years marketing uh, experience, been uh, a little bit in the traditional space, but the majority of this time has been focused on the digital space. Um, Will, why don't you give a little shout out? Yes, absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on yet another webinar mini series that we're putting on here at Keystone Click. I am Will Jurgensen, the Director of Client Experience. I don't have nearly as much uh, experience and insight as our owner and CEO, Lori, but I tell you what, I've learned from the best and I'm excited to share a lot of really great insights with everyone today while I piggyback off of everything that Lori has to say. So <laughs> super glad to have everyone. Yeah, feel free to throw any questions in the either the Q&A or in the, in the chat. Um, and we'll make sure to get those at the end of the uh, presentation here. All right. So what we're going to dive into is um, what exactly is content marketing and mastering the basics of it. And this is really what the focus of the webinar is high level foundation content that is convert and, and how to increase those um, conversions. Cause that's what we're here for today is, is to, you know, we're in business to, to generate, um, dollars at the uh at the end of the day here and there as mentioned opening it up for questions before we do get started though i'm going to throw this out there um if you find something that is inspirational you have an aha moment or just going wow that that's kind of cool uh take a screenshot highly encourage you to throw it on social media tag keystone click in it and let us know what it is that um, was an aha moment uh, for a chance to win this super awesome book, Secrets of Ad Agency Owners, The Biggest Marketing Mistakes I've Seen. Yours truly actually has a chapter on the topic of blogging in this book. All right, let's get to it. I wanna clarify that you, yours truly is Lori and not myself. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Will. <laughs> Welcome. So what is content marketing? Absolutely. I tell you what, that's a heck of a place to start, you know, from a high level, which is, you know, what today is really about, and, and then beginning to peel back the layers of the onion. Content marketing is really the creation and sharing of material online that is intended to stimulate interest in a particular products or services. You know, as we think about content marketing, the first real wave of content marketing was simple. It was bloggers and content writers and marketers targeting a very particular keyword uh, inside of their content. And they felt confident that by doing so, Google would index and rank their content pages, you know, ultimately ahead of their competitors. You know, as, as usually follows change and innovation, what we see today is that content marketing is actually a much bigger challenge. Today, the big focus is on conversion within your content, right? So if you invest time in creating it, you're gonna re, uh, reap the rewards. Uh, and that shouldn't be a secret that your competition is gonna be strong out there, right? So there are a lot of marketers who are going to give up easily, but those of us who learn the best practices around content marketing and truly evaluate our customer insights, we're gonna be the ones that are ultimately gonna be able to grow our business and really reach our audience online. Well said, Will. Thank so you. I've got a I've got a fun story here to really help illustrate the significance and importance of content marketing. It all starts with a squirrel. So, you know, COVID this past summer, not too much excitement going on. Um, so my husband took on the challenge of befriending a squirrel. Um, what we did is we started by throwing some peanuts on the picnic table. We'd be inside at the window looking like, oh, he's, he's eating the peanuts. <laughs> and, um, and then eventually he, we, he was getting familiar. And instead of taking the peanuts to his, his home to eat them, he would actually just hang out on the picnic table and eat them. One day, my husband and I were just sitting outside at, um, in our backyard at the picnic table. And that little guy just showed up looking for peanuts. He felt comfortable enough to start hanging out with us. 
And then this was about a month later, and this is a lot of peanut sharing over time, but that little guy actually ate a peanut out of my husband's hand. And our dog was singing it out with him too. So this squirrel had so much trust in us that he was willing to come hang out, eat a peanut out of our hand with our crazy dog who is typically chasing squirrels all over the yard. Um, and, and why do I tell you this story? Content marketing for the purpose of conversions is the exact same idea. You can't just go and try to close the deal or win their business without proving that you're a trustworthy source. You slowly feed them information of value to establish that trust. And once they get closer and closer to having that confidence in you, they're ready to eat out of your hand and start doing business with you. It takes time. But we're going to talk about the mastering the basics and really producing content from a high level standpoint that's going to help you generate conversions in your business. All right. I love it. That's a great story, Lori. I really think that it kind of drives home this idea of the time that it takes, right? And not to mention the fact that we can incorporate a squirrel into any story is always a success. Oh, that's a challenge that we may need to <laughs> incorporate in the future webinars. Absolutely. So as Lori discussed, right, you know, where we want to get started here is really about mastering the basics. Um, and we, you know, come at this from the idea of having a plan. So Lori and I are going to kind of tag team our list here and um, as you can see, you know, in our first line, uh, who is the reader of your content, right? Something that's incredibly important to look at. You know, the, the clearer you are in your description of the demographics of the content reader, the better, right? So for example, you know, potential readers of a particular blog post could be anywhere from digital marketers, CMOs, content authors, editors, publishers, content strategists or, or social media managers, right? And so it's really important to understand, you know, who is the reader of that content? Yeah, under knowing who's digesting the information is gonna be step one. And, and if you've attended any of our past webinars, we put a lot of emphasis on understanding your target customer. And then that next step is looking at what type of content is popular to them. So some people like to read information. Some like to watch videos. Uh, some like to listen to podcasts. Some like to download white papers or research articles and really understanding the type of content that your ideal customer likes to digest is gonna make it easier for you to attract that type of person to you and ultimately get them through that conversion funnel. Yeah, and something to even just piggyback off of that to bring it back to the squirrel, you know, for an instance is, you know, had Lori and Andy gone out there and fed it carrots um, or some other type of food that squirrels don't particularly enjoy eating, that relationship would have never necessarily been built, right? So it was about providing the squirrel with food or content in this case um, that really appeals to them and something that they enjoy, something that they find value in and therefore are able to use to build that trust. So um, you know, to kind of continue, you know, moving on, we're looking at which channels and devices uh, that they're typically using to read the content, right? I mean, there's a, a number of variety of different social media platforms out there. They continue to pop up. Um, there's a lot of blog options. And, and really, it's about understanding the channels that your users are on so that you're creating content that's going directly to the source, as opposed to the source, the consumer or potential prospect having to find your content where you are. Yeah, that's a great point, um, is making sure that you're creating content that's easy for, easy for them to consume at the end of the day. So, you know, podcasting was, um, it was really big. It still is really big. Now there's a whole new channel out there um, called Clubhouse. And there's some huge movement happening on it. It's kind of like a live podcast. Uh, and there's a ton of people at any given time. I, they're called rooms. Um, you know, there's like 500 people in a room and typically these are business owners. So if you're targeting entrepreneurs and business owners, this is a platform that you want to be pushing your content out on. The other thing that's really important to look at is making sure that you've got a topic that's that's trending and of high value of importance to your, 
your target customer. So the more that you can get inside their head to understand what is it that they're interested in, what's going to connect and resonate with them, then the better that you're going to pull them in to want to engage with that. So as, as Will said, you know, I don't know, I feel like a squirrel might like carrots. So maybe you should pick something. I'm not a fan of peas. So maybe I know, if I put peas out there, maybe the squirrel wouldn't want to eat them. I don't know. Um, but making sure that you're putting information out there that is of interest and of value to your target customer. Yeah, absolutely. And then let's polish it off here on mastering the basics with really, you know, what are the key drivers that are going to convert your readers of your content into potential buyers of your product, your service, your offering and or your solution. And so one thing that we absolutely want to highlight here is actually under, not only just understanding your, your potential consumers, but what are their pains, right? What can you offer them that's going to ultimately help alleviate some of their initial pains right now. You're not going to, right. It's, it's kind of like putting a bandaid on it, if you will, because you don't want to go in there and perform surgery and fix them all up without actually having them come in and become a client of yours necessarily. But it's about alleviating some of that initial pain and using that, you know, asking those types of questions to your clients, to your prospects, using that information then, you know, inside of your content to ultimately convert them into potential buyers. Yeah, the bottom line is that your content strategy and plan needs to be aligned with answering these questions so that you can move forward and be successful. So you have to have a plan and, and not just wing it. Um, I like to say that, you know, if you're just throwing darts in the dark, you're, you're not going to win. You may get lucky every once in a while and hit that bullseye, but if you're planning and being more strategic about this, you're going to see the results at the end of the day. All right, so let's talk about um, the next big uh, tactic I would say that is extremely important in content marketing, which is the headline. Now, your headline is really the ultimate decision maker with regards to whether someone opens up that email, that's it, subject line, clicks on the link for the, the blog post, that's the title of the post. Um, clicks on the ad that you have out there, the message in your, your pay-per-click ad or your social media ad, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to get people to do, that headline is the most important component because that's gonna, that's what people make that decision on whether or not I'm going to um, attend this webinar or click on this email. So, um, I wrote an article a, a couple of years back. It's um, very, very relevant still. Uh, Will, if you want to throw that link in the chat, uh, it's on my LinkedIn. Um, it talks about how people make decisions with regards to what information to consume or what to click on, what to take that next, next step to go deeper on. And really that headline needs to connect with that consumer on either an emotional or an intellectual level. If you're not connecting with them on either of those two, you've lost them. So if our title of this webinar was simply content marketing, what are you getting out of it? There's no emotional level or intellectual connection there. But because we focused on the conversion, there's definitely some emotion connected with that. Um, but the emphasis on educating you is connecting and resonating with you from an intellectual level. So um, in that article, I have referenced a number of tools that you can use that actually measure the significance of your headline by looking at that emotional or intellectual um, use of words, and it, it'll actually give you a rating. So there's a couple tools. I highly recommend you check them out. Um, we use them fairly often within our business for ourselves and, and for our clients. Awesome. And that link was shared in the chat for everyone to be able to access. Um, writing conversationally. I really like this idea, Lori. And I think it's something that, you know, as we sit down and we're trying to produce content for our, our ideal client or ideal customer, we often get kind of like a writer's block, right? And we forget that um, simple is better at times. And, and, and I love how you put in here, you know, this idea of you know, record yourself essentially as if you were talking to your customer, or you're talking to a friend as if you're trying to sell. 
listen to the way you talk, listen to the way that you converse and really utilize that same language inside of your content, right? So the way that you write can make your content market efforts easy to read and personal. You know, do you need to write the way that you speak? Um, some people, you know, might not believe that it necessarily works, but it, it does ultimately, right? Make reading a habit and you'll be a much better writer. I really kind of love that line as well, right? So imagine that you're having a chat with a friend, um, you're free to express yourself and give your friend a chance to respond, right? Writing in this manner will increase your engagement and ultimately your sales. You're following it inside of that content. Don't create uh, great content that's simply all about you either, right? You still have to focus on providing solutions, per, you know, easing those pain points. Um, and if you don't know how to sound in a conversation, as I mentioned, feel free to record yourself talking about your topic. Pretend like you're talking to a friend and explaining your topic, whatever that may be, to make sure that you understand your conversational tone inside of that. Yeah, and, and it's just more real. It's easy. You want to make it easy for people to want to continue to digest and consume the content that you're creating. And that's why it's important. And I've noted on the slide here that you need to still obey the basic rules of writing. You, you don't want to simply record transcribe and include the ums, the ahs, and all of those components. You want it to be a nice, clean, polished piece. If it is a written piece um, for social media, for blogs, email newsletters, whatever it may be, um, but have that conversational tone because again, that's how people are going to connect and start to build that relationship with you so that eventually they're, they're eating peanuts out of your hand. Or carrots. Um, this one is really important in looking at any type of content that you're creating, especially the content that you're really looking for some strong conversions to take place. This is typically um, your landing pages. So you have social media, you have ads, emails, whatever. You're, you're driving them to a landing page where you want something to happen. You want them to sign up, subscribe to a program, whatever it may be. The easiest thing that you can do to help increase those conversions happening a lot faster is to answer any objections that they may be having. Any sort of hesitation that would stop them from moving forward and completing that conversion, you want to get that out of the way right away. So some types of objection, objections, that's a fun word to say. Um, I threw on there <laughs> um, objections related to the to the need, like um, them specifically saying we're not interested in in this right now, or we're not interested in in changing our process right now. So how do you answer and resolve that objection? Think about that um, related to the specific um, the specific product or offering. So. Uh, we've looked at um, this and we don't think it will help our business. So how do you resolve that objection? Um, any objections focused on the viability of the source or the supplier? So for example, someone may say, we're not comfortable moving to web fulfillment with a, with a small company such as you. So again, think about any specific objections that um, may come in Price is probably one of the big ones. So how do you how do you answer that when someone says your price is too high? Answer that objection in your message to help um, increase and maximize the conversions that are happening. Yeah, absolutely. These objections really uh, really hit home, really kind of sting the heartstrings, if you will, because there's no question that we've you know internally faced a lot of these objections and actually having the content available up front, not only does it help you internally to help face these objections inside of a meeting as well, because you've taken the time to review the objections and you've prepared yourself, but it also then is, you know, so much more forward thinking with your content as well. Um, the other thing that's really important is to make sure it's extremely easy to read. I know we, we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier on, but the clarity in the message and the simplicity to digest the information can have a huge impact on whether or not that conversion happens. So the image on the left, just a screen grab I captured, it's extremely condensed, hard to read, your eye gets lost while you're looking at it. 
um, you're not going to get conversions with this. And you'd be lucky if someone actually sits and reads the entire post overall. But we as, um, as consumers and just users of technology are in this, we scroll, we just, you know, we sit on our phones, we scroll and we, we just read the highlights. So making it easy to capture this information, that's why headlines are helpful. Um, bullets or lists are helpful. Any sort of visual, like a graph or um, embedding videos on pages, uh, using bold, big text, um, short, concise paragraphs, the easier it is to read and digest and scroll through your information, the more that information they're actually going to consume. Yeah, absolutely. And this brings us to call to action, which again, if you've had an opportunity to tune into really any of our previous webinars, no matter what we're talking about, the call to action is always a part of it, right? So a blog post or web copy without any call to action is a, essentially a job half done. Although it depends on the intent of the content in the first place, um, if you want a better result, you know, try adding a call to action phrase with proper backlinks um, to that landing page, you know, when the emotion is already high, when you've already kind of begun to um, provide them with information, with content that, again, is, is really connecting with them. Uh, that is going to be ultimately when it's incredibly important that they have that next step readily available. They don't have to go searching for it. They don't have to click to another page, but that call to action is readily available. You know, if you want multiple call to actions within your copy, um, that's perfect. We're huge advocates of that, right? Embedded within your blog posts, you know, consider potentially pop-ups. Uh, pop-ups don't necessarily get a lot of love, um, but it's an action that the end user has to take. They have to click out of it. They have, they know that it's up close, it's in personal, and it's it's right in front of them. You know, they off readers then often find themselves a little. Uh, disruptive, um, but that's, you know, that's what's uh, so great about them because they're disturbed in a way. Um, so a great pop-up. They get your attention. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And it certainly adds to the, you know, the reader's experience and, you know, by offering resources that help the reader take that next step. So be very um, conscious of that call to action inside of your content. And what is it that you want that end user to do? Yeah. And, and having multiple call to actions embedded throughout a page is gonna be extremely helpful as you talked about. So you can have them kind of just be subtle links in, in your copy, or they can be big bold buttons or forms, um, but diversifying what that call to action is with ultimately the end result will also help increase that conversion to take place. Ooh, I love this one. <laughs> I say this all the time though. That's why I get excited about it. But, you know, we've all heard this fantastic movie, especially if you're a baseball fan, if you build it, they will come. But guess what? This, this only works in the movies. The reality is that you need to tell people what it is you have to offer. If you've got a giveaway, you've got something that you want people to subscribe to or sign up for, they're not magically going to show up on this page. You need to push this information out, get it to your email list, um, share it with influencers and advocates in your network so that they can share it with their network, push it out on social media, invest in some paid ads. At the end of the day, you need to put some time and energy in getting these things to actually happen. Um, this is something that we talk about with, a lot with our clients, especially those that are trying to make some sort of like a, an online program or, or learning tool is that about 20% of your, your investment, and that's from a, a time and financial standpoint, is going to be making that tool. 80% of that investment is promoting it, time and financial it takes a lot more energy to get people to that. Yeah, you want an amazing program that you're offering, but you have to tell people it exists. You have to get them to eat that peanut out of your hand, which takes time. You've got to you got to build that trust and establish it so that they are comfortable and confident to proceed and start doing business with you. Awesome. Perfect. Well, let's move into really kind of our, our last main portion here. And it's really heavily focused on increasing your conversion. So Lori, I'm going to let you really kind of dive into uh, this next slide, the lift model ultimately. 
Yeah, I'm I'm actually kind of geeking out about this a little bit. I, I learned about it fairly um, fairly recently, and it's a really good way. This is more so for like those landing pages. Um, but at the end of the day, anything that you're doing, you're driving people to a page on a website and you want them to convert. So um, Wider Funnel is an organization that this is kind of their philosophy, but it's been, I mean, Harvard has gone deep into this strategy amongst a number of other institutions. Uh, and I love it. I think it's fascinating. But first and foremost, the idea with Lyft is to help, you know, maximize the opportunities that you're getting. And in order to do that, you have to have a very clear and concise value proposition that's going to ultimately help to increase the convert conversion rate. So um, how do you go about doing that? Well, the drivers to that conversion are um, relevance and clarity. So when you look at relevance, you're saying, does a landing page relate to what the visitor thought they were going to see? And this is really important. So I've seen this on a number of instances. You click on an ad or you know, you're searching for something, there's an ad and the ad language makes you think it's one thing. But then when you get to that site, that page, it has nothing to do with what you clicked on in the ad. So you need to make sure that whatever brought them to that page has a consistent look, feel, and message. Otherwise, you're going to lose them. They're expecting a very specific thing, and that's why landing pages are, are very powerful. So make sure it is indeed relevant. The next thing that's going to help to um, be a driver in increasing these conversions is the, the clarity. You have to be very clear in, in, in articulating that value proposition. It's probably one of the most common mistakes that, that we identify is that everyone's trying to be everything to everybody. Instead of just saying very clearly, this is exactly what I do and this is who I do it for. And this is the benefit and the outcome they're going to get by working with me. So relevance and clarity in your messaging are going to help increase those conversions. Now the areas um, uh, that will potentially uh, inhibit would be anxiety and distraction. So um, potential mistakes that I see are with regards to um, any sort of anxiety, especially if you are a brand or an organization that this, this site visitor, um, this new consumer is not familiar with, is you need a level of trust. Um, I know, uh, Will, you and I talk a lot with, with um, potential clients on this is, you know, you can say that you have the absolute best widget in the world and that you've been, you know, building widgets uh, forever and you build them for this specific company. But if there is nothing of trust there that says, I've also built widgets for this really well-known company, that's trust or a testimonial, or have you received an award, or you've been published in an industry um, respected publication. So you need some sort of trust to minimize that anxiety. The other thing is um, distractions. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the clarity. So the more bells and whistles that you have on with your content, the more distracting it is. You want to make it very easy and simple for that visitor to do what it is you want them to do, which is buy your product, fill out your form, sign up for your, your email list, subscribe to your podcast, whatever it is that you want them to do. And the last thing here is, is urgency. So whenever you have a, um, uh, campaign mapped out and you want people to take certain actions, you need to create a level of urgency that makes them uh, want to take that action. Otherwise, it's something to just go on the to-do list that they're going to get to eventually. So um, we've seen this done in a number of ways. I'm sure you've experienced it where you, you know, we talked about pop-ups a little bit earlier, Will. If you're about to, you know, some websites, if, if the browser senses that your mouse is going to the X or the back button, a pop-up jumps up and says, don't leave yet, you know, um, or there's the, the counters and we've used that in our landing pages. You know, we've got 23 hours left till this workshop closes, you know, something along those lines is going to capture um, someone's attention and help get that conversion to happen faster.
Absolutely. Awesome. That was great, Lori. Thank you. So in summary, you know, what we talked about here today, and we're going to get into the, the webinar, you know, mini series that are coming up um, as a part of our content webinar series here in a moment. But today was really about the content marketing. What is content marketing? Mastering the basics, right? Having a plan in place, right? The call to action. And then ultimately, as we discussed with today's content creation, you know, it's really about increasing those conversions. So at this point in time, we would uh, love to open it up to questions. Feel free to utilize the chat feature. We do, Lori, have a couple of questions in here that we're going to get to. But before we do get to that, so we'll give everyone a couple of minutes if you'd like to submit a question. Before we get to that, though, we want to talk about what's up coming up next, right? Inside of our content marketing webinar mini series, you're going to hear from a number of uh, different employees here at Keystone Click throughout our webinar mini series, really kind of bringing their expertise and their experiences to these webinars. So coming to you on January 28th, where to share, choosing channels and content that works, followed by best practices for content that brings in new business, repurposing content, the key to maximizing your reach. That's going to be a really good one. And then as always, we always end all of our webinar mini series with an expert panel discussion. We'll certainly have more information on who those panelists are going to be, but those have been such incredible um, you know, webinar panel discussions that we've been able to hold with experts all across the United States, really bringing their insights for you to come and listen and really take home and back to your business with you. So you can find all of our webinars at keystoneclick.com backslash webinars. And then lastly, it's like, oh my goodness, it's like I didn't, I was just signing up for a webinar. Look at all these incredible offers. We have launched a content strategy session offer. So with that being said, and this has not gone public yet, this is going straight to everyone that's on today's webinar. If you're ultimately having trouble staying active on social media and or your website, no problem. Right. So our strategy session is going to equip you with ideas for both social media posts and blog posts that are individualized to fit your company and industry. So it's about everything that we talked about today, but actually coming together with us here at Keystone Click and really taking that to the next level. So I'm going to include a link to that content strategy session, how you can sign up, what everything is entailed inside of that um, in the chat box right now. All right, and um, let's open it up for questions. I will stop sharing and you can just see our beautiful mugs for the, the rest of the time here. What questions do we have? Yeah, absolutely. I, I am so grateful for everyone that uh, was kind of chiming in a little bit uh, throughout the webinar here today. I just want to make sure that I have everyone. Lloyd kind of chimed in with one of our, our first questions here, Lori, as we were talking about call to actions. You know, Lloyd was asking specifically if we have suggestions for call to actions on, on a piece of educational content. Um, yeah, you know, we, we covered that a little bit, including uh, cross-linking to other pieces of content um, and always including a, a form or a specific call out. I guess it depends on what is that content piece um, and what is the goal that you're trying to get them to achieve. So just making it uh, an abundant uh, number or frequency for that action to take place, but also, as I mentioned, um, make it easy for them to not hesitate and just be confident in moving forward and taking that next step. Awesome. And Michelle comes in next with actually a really great question. She says, what if your audience is diverse and how they receive content? You know, so she even provides an example. Lenders, they're large, regional and small banks all operate differently. You know, some are forward in their content formats, aka video, while others prefer email and others are still using social. So a little bit about how to, you know, diverse, you know, and, and how your audience receives that content. Sure. That's a great question, Michelle. Thank you very much for that. Um, and I would say, first off, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You don't just create one type of piece of content. You definitely want to diversify where you're putting that message out there. Um, but you don't have to start from scratch every single time. You can simply record a video and then transcribe that video, turn it into a blog post, take little snippets of that information, and there's some social media content. So you have one core message that's being distributed across that um, diverse uh, means of how your audience consumes that content. Perfect. 
Awesome. And then we have another one coming in. Um, oh, I just lost it. I am going to do my best to pronunciate Eloisa, I believe. Um, thank you so much for your question. And it's really focused on the pandemic, so incredibly relevant. And so they state, I have really noticed a lot of our engagement has gone down. Has this been something that you've noticed, you know, inside of our own business and across other accounts as well? I'm, I'm assuming that's a social media related question. I could be wrong. Um, let's see if she, yes, it is okay. So it depends on, on the platform and really what happened as soon as the pandemic started is yes, a lot of people jumped on uh, because there's nothing else to do. You weren't meeting in person, you know, you're online, but what might have happened is they shifted the channel that they were engaging on. Um, I know a lot of people jumped on to LinkedIn right away. Um, but again, it goes back to those questions and knowing what type of content is of value to your audience. So some of the platforms have been changing the algorithms a little bit with regards to how they display your information. So, you know, paying attention to that and making sure that you're, you're posting at the right time, letting your audience know that um, this is the type of information that they can be expecting from you but I would actually reach out to your audience and ask them, you know, what channels are they on? What type of information do they want to hear from you uh, to help give you, get you back on track? Um, I would be interested in chatting further with you on this though, to, to get a bigger scope understanding of what's happening and see if we can help you out. Yeah, absolutely. And then Chris, uh, Lori, get your magic wand out here. Cause Chris would like to know how you make tax law exciting and interesting and oh, produce boy. exciting and interesting content around that. Well, you can make anything exciting and interesting <laughs> <That's true. That's laughs> or, or as what we say internally is we sexify the content. <laughs> um, really it's your own personality. And, you know, we've, we've had a number of clients that are in what I would I guess I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it like boring industries. Um, but the reality is if you can have some fun with it, then you're going to attract people that like to be entertained, you know? So as I mentioned earlier, people like and connect with content on an emotional or intellectual level. So if you can have some fun with tax law, um, go for it. I and mean, we had a client uh, a few years back who would share really boring educational content for their industry on video but every single video he was wearing a different costume like one time he was as a pirate and was talking like a pirate while he's sharing this next time he was santa claus so he made it entertaining and people wanted to watch it just because of the fact that he he was entertaining people while sharing really boring information absolutely that's hilarious i love that idea that's great um, awesome. Sierra is going to follow it up with another pandemic question, which again is so top of mind right now. I really appreciate these questions. She says, how do you increase urgency in your brand while being mindful of other urgencies such as consumers health? Yeah. So, um, I know Will, you and I talked a lot about this early on when, um, the pandemic hit about, you know, what's important is maintaining a strong presence online. You don't want to be selling but adding value to your audience. And a lot of shifts happened with regards to the needs of the consumer um, over the past year. So understanding how your brand can be a resource and fulfill those needs. You know, you know um, I always like using the example of, of cars you know, for the longest time, it was like all the bells and whistles and the features of the vehicle to get you from point A to point B. But today's day and age, safety is way more important than anything else. When it comes to travel, it's all about safety, where it used to be what's going to get me there fastest and most comfortable. So the, the needs of that consumer have changed and understanding what's important to your consumer so that you can be a resource, add value, to your audience, but taking those considerations into mind. Hopefully that kind of helped answer that question. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult question. And obviously we are available um, to continue. <laughs> Don says cup holders are still important. I agree 100%. <laughs> 
Awesome. Thank you. Um, wonderful. Well, I tell you what, that really kind of wraps up the question portion of today's webinar. Um, I will just remind everyone, once again, you can access all of our previous webinars as well as sign up for our upcoming webinars by visiting keystoneclick.com backslash webinars. If you have any questions about the content that was discussed today, please feel free to reach out to Lori or myself um, by email address or by visiting keystoneclick.com. So thank you everyone for joining us. Lori, any uh, parting words? Nope. I'm happy to answer any additional questions. Someone wants to reach out or uh, feel free to connect with either of us on LinkedIn. And Heather, I'll just let you know that this uh, recording will be available again online momentarily uh, within the next 24 hours at keystoneclick.com backslash webinars, and you will have full access to the beginning portion of today's webinar. So thank you, everyone. We look forward to seeing you again on our upcoming webinar mini series. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. All right. See ya.